Few players have had such a complete disregard for their physical well-being as Lewis Moody. In a club career spanning 16 years for Leicester and Bath, he won 71 caps for England and played for the British and Irish Lions. But his fearless style of play took its toll, and earlier this year, he announced his retirement. I think initially it was, you know, it was very difficult because I still wanted to continue playing. Um, sadly, the shoulder wouldn't let me, so I had to make that decision. And well, more, moreover, my body really made the decision for me. But mentally, you've still got to press the button to say, okay, it's over. I have to admit, the first time I really missed it was, you know, the first game of the season. And he sat down and watched it, and uh, yeah, you could still feel the old emotion building within and then a realization that you know you're not going to get to, to step foot on the park again and uh, and let any of it out so but i don't look back with uh, with any frustration really because i had i was very lucky to have you know incredibly successful career with some fantastic players and teams and, and to have been a small part of all of the success you know i had i would have I would have chewed someone's hand off his uncompromising approach earned him the nickname Mad Dog, befitting an Englishman who thrived on the physical aspects of the game. Being a flanker and, and playing rugby is all about the combative physical nature of the game and you know, that was always something I loved. And just getting stuck into each other and testing yourself against some of the best players in the world. One such occasion came two years ago when England travelled down under for a two-test series against the Wallabies. Quaid had actually embarrassed me the game before, I think he, I'd missed about six tackles on him alone because I gave him too much space and he's got such elusive feet that uh, I was always furious with myself and, you know, I, in my head I was thinking there's no way I should play next weekend and I was captain. So I had a quick chat with a defensive coach, Mike Ford, said, look, give me a chance to get back at this guy and, uh, and from the first line out I was just targeted with going and getting him and I did exactly that and uh, I felt much better anyway <laughs> about myself afterwards. Moody's achievements were all the more remarkable, considering that in 2005 he was diagnosed with colitis, a debilitating bowel disease. I was losing a lot of blood every time I went to the loo, and uh, the classic bloke thing, I waited about a month till I told anyone, and went, finally went and saw the doctor, and he very quickly diagnosed it with ulcerative colitis. And, uh, yeah, it was, to be honest, it was a bit of a nightmare those first two years, because you, you try and keep it quiet. You know, as you said, I had a lot of injuries, and I didn't want this to be another reason for coaches not to pick me or, you know, because there's, there's every opportunity I might have to run off the pitch during a game because I need the loo and it was, a, it was a very debilitating disease even to the point I live five minutes from training and I'd have to plan my route so that I could possibly stop six times just on the way in a five minute journey to, to get there. And I, I didn't speak about it with my mates or, or anyone really bar my wife and my folks for a couple of years and as soon as you do start to talk about it, it becomes acceptable. It was just then something you deal with. You just you just have to get on with it, don't you? It was, it was one of those things you overcome. You know, a lot of people deal with a lot more severe illnesses and, uh, and issues. So now I'm a champion for Crohn's and Colitis UK, and and a lot of kids and and people come in contact with me since I've spoken about it and, and telling me their issues and they're trying to help me. They want to know more, and so for me that's the biggest thing. Respected by his peers, Moody was one of the most successful players in the game twice winner of the Heineken Cup and seven Premiership titles with Leicester, but the undoubted highlight came in 2003. Johnny Wilkinson may have kicked England to World Cup glory, but Moody's role in the build-up to that golden strike has often gone unnoticed. Lewis Moody coming on for England now. So I was lucky to even be on the field. Richard Hill, I think, got cramp and Clive, Clive put me on. Moody gets the ball immediately. I was lucky to be in a side with so many incredible individuals for them all to come together at that time, in that occasion in Australia, was yeah. just an amazing, an amazing day. Something that always lives you, and it's incredible to think it was nearly 10 years ago. Moody led his country 11 times, his final appearance against France at last year's World Cup. An inspiring figure who led by example on the pitch, he's set to do the same off it. We were doing a trek across the Yukon in, uh, in February, which is 300 miles across Alaska, and uh, it's called the Arctic Yukon Arctic Ultra Marathon. So uh, it's going to be a challenge, to say at least. I think it gets down to about minus 50 degrees, and, uh, and we're doing it for Hope HIV, which is a charity I've been involved with for about six years. I'll certainly be uh, be coaching. I've done a number of coaching sessions over the summer, 
um, with St Vincent and Bermuda, the two national sides. And, and when you see people learn very quickly from just the small bit of information that you can give them is, is one of the joys you get out of it. I owe a huge amount to rugby and, uh, and still do, which is why I think it's so important to try and give as much back as possible to the, to the next generation coming through.